can you believe how gentle she took it? <laughs> she didn't even really strike. <laughs> Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Just a few more days before we head out to the Chicago area to the Tinley Park NARBC Reptile Show. So it's going to be a shortened week, which means we have a lot of work to do. Today I'm going to go through baby clubers. Just a couple clutches left to hatch, so we're going to see what's going on there. I do have to set up some baby ball pythons, the ones that I cut a few days ago. We're definitely going to have to check the baby geckos because Jessica's on vacation and I have to put them away and I know there's a lot of them are going to hatch. And then Lori is going to feed some snakes. And speaking of feeding snakes, believe it or not, Noah is coming. He's going to help out. And he said he wants to do something on his channel where he feeds a couple snakes blindfolded. So I will put a link in the description. You guys can watch that. I have no idea what's going to happen there, but I'm sure it's going to be an awesome time. What do you guys say? Today we make today the most amazing day. Can you do me a favor before we get started? Go ahead and comment down below. I have an idea. Put the word vlog in the comment. Make up something creative with the word vlog in it and I'll pick a handful of my favorite ones I will pin them of course I'll send you guys a couple signed posters and maybe a shirt or two so go ahead and do that and then hit that like button while you're at it because I want to get this video as many likes as possible and you may ask yourself why do I ask for likes the fact is is the more likes and comments that we get the more YouTube serves to more people and we reach more people with an amazing message of loving animals and loving life so what do you say we get today started remember those clutches of eggs that I cut the other day the first one was a pastel and cheap banana bred to a cinnamon well they hatched out and it's pretty Pretty interesting how crazy my odds were on this one. Of course, these ones here are Enchi bananas, which are really gorgeous. And I mean, these are really pretty ones. And the Enchi and the banana mix together really well, make for a really beautiful snake. But the thing that's interesting about this clutch beyond those two snakes are the rest of the clutch, which is right here. The thing that you'll notice is number one, there's no bananas, and number two, there's no cinnamons. The female was a cinnamon, and out of the whole clutch here, we had seven babies and not even one cinnamon. So there wasn't a cinnamon enchi, there wasn't a cinnamon banana, there wasn't anything. When I caught the clutch, I thought that there was a cinnamon enchi, but when they hatched out, I realized they weren't. Nevertheless, it certainly is still a really beautiful clutch of ball pythons. Then the next clutch was actually that lorry ball bred to a scaleless head. And I had told you that I produced a few lorry scaleless heads last year that we're raising up in hopes to breed them at some point. Let's go ahead and see now that they hatched what was in there. If my memory serves me correct, I had three lorries and four normals in the clutch. So this one right here is missing a few scales on its head. It's not like a really incredible scaleless head animal, but it doesn't matter how many scales are missing, just that they're missing. This one here is another one, the second of the three, and uh, it's got all the scales on its head. So that's just a normal lorry. So, so far one lorry scaleless and one lorry. Let's see, there's one more in here, I thought. And you know what, as it turns out, I'm looking at this clutch and realizing that there's not another lorry in there. And what it basically was, was this animal right here, which is just a normal ball python, but a little bit darker. So in the egg, I mistook this one for a lorry ball python, which is kind of a bummer. So we actually only had two lorry balls in this clutch. But let's go ahead and just take a look at heads really quick. We've got two that have all the scales on its head. Let me see if I can find a little bit on this one. Oh, this one here is definitely missing some scales on its head. So it's just a normal, but it's missing scale inside said and by the way the other day some people commented about like what's all the white stuff on these animals this is the incubation medium this is the the hatch right it's actually like a pearl like type of thing and we washed this off before we put them away so uh nothing to worry about so two more babies to look at really quick just to see if there's any other scale heads this one is a normal and that one's a normal. So all in all, it's not really that great of a clutch. I had one scaleless head, one lorry scaleless head, another normal lorry, and then four normal ball pythons. But that happens. It's still cool to hatch snakes no matter what they are. So anyways, I've got to set these ones up and a couple other snakes that I have sitting waiting as well. So uh, let's get to it. But before I start putting ball pythons away, I want to see if the cowrie tick will eat. After she settled in and she certainly seemed like she was striky at my little camera fuzzy thing, I think maybe she wants to eat. I have no idea, but let's give it a shot. Hey, sweet girl. Want to try the food? Can you believe how gentle she took it? <laughs> she didn't even really strike. She just kind of opened her mouth and took it. What a cutie. <laughs> how awesome 
is that? I mean, I tell you what, as a snake owner, anyone that owns snakes knows that that first meal is always so rewarding because, you know, when you get a new animal in, the first thing you want to do is just see it eat. You know, and I always tell people, give it a few days to kind of settle in. Uh, I might have dropped the gun a little bit on this one, but I knew she just seemed so calm and so relaxed, so I thought we were in pretty good shape. But uh, that first meal is just amazing because that just tells you, okay, they're ready to go. And the fact that she took a meal the very first time and so gently means that, number one, she's going to have a great calm temperament, I'm sure. And number two, she is off to the races. So uh, next thing you know, she's going to be eight or ten foot long and beautiful looking. Uh, okay, I might be getting ahead of myself, but uh, we have a ways to go before she's that. But how awesome that my little cowrie tick ate for the first time here. You know, there's so many things that go into snake breeding, and the majority of them are really pretty mundane. I mean, you know, it's not always excitement like, you know, dealing with huge snakes and hatching amazing animals. Sometimes it's just doing the little things like setting baby snakes up. And of course, Mary in the background is cleaning and watering, and Kelsey is in the next aisle cleaning and watering, and so is everyone upstairs. So uh, I just have to set these babies that just hatched up, uh, get them in there, get them settled in. They'll shed in about seven to 10 days, and then we'll offer food. So probably about 10 to 12 days will offer their first meal and uh, with ball pythons I would say probably about 90% eat that first time uh, and then you have to kind of fiddle with the last 10% to figure out what they're gonna eat but regardless we're gonna go ahead and set these babies up So all the baby ball pythons are set up. We still have to check out colubrids to see if anything hatched there. We definitely have to go through geckos because I know some stuff hatched there and we have to get those set up. And then we have to probably help Lori feed adult colubrids or find out what she's doing. So uh, still plenty on our plate. All right, so guys, we just finished up Noah's video uh, where he fed some snakes blindfolded. And then of course he had me do it. And uh, this is some of the results of our fun. No snakes were harmed in this. Uh, again, we were just feeding, but Noah was doing it blindfolded. <laughs> it's, really, it's really hilarious. How did you think it went? Uh, it was heart racing, probably like one of the, not like, it wasn't scary, it was just like intense. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put the link in the description guys you guys can watch the whole video on it uh, I laughed my butt off because Noah was a, a wussy about things <laughs> and, <was> scary, man. <laughs> All right, check out the link in the description. Please please show Noah some love subscribe to his channel Love you guys. So next up on the list is just to check a handful of colubrid eggs that are hatching here Let's see what we have. Oh look at this. These are actually uh, little het scaleless corn snakes here But look at this look at this. Oh my gosh. Look at how cute that is. Of course. That is a beautiful tangerine Honduran milk snake and you can see the little head sticking out right now little nose right there little noses Oh my gosh, <laughs> look at how feisty that little monkey is. Oh, it's okay little guy. Little guy. It's all right uh, Hondur oh, oh gosh, oh now I'm in for trouble. Like, oh, oh, don't bite him. Don't bite him. Stop. Stop <laughs> Those Hondurans are little feisty monkeys as soon as they hatch. Let's see what we have in this clutch here. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh, there's some corn, some hypocorns. Oh, and look at this, look at this, look at this, guys. This is actually another scaleless corn snake. We're having such a good scaleless corn snake. And there's another couple in here, too. I can see here's one right here. Uh, oh, my gosh, yeah, there's another little scaleless right there. There's still one egg left to hatch. And then this looks like, oh, gosh, I don't even know what that is. It actually looks like a really interesting, maybe, maybe a hypo. Who knows? But, oh, gosh, as these corn snakes start going, you know, oh, 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 stay in there, stay in there, stay in there. Gotta always make sure that there's no heads caught when you close them, because I always say, when you take a bunch of corn snakes out, it's just like spring, they're spring loaded for sure. Okay, last touch. Oh, look, it's some more Mexican black kings, guys. Oh my gosh, and of course some Puebla milk snakes. Some really pretty ones, though, too. But of course, everyone loves Mexican black king snakes, for sure. Look at how gorgeous these guys are. It's so cool. So again, we are getting down to kind of the last handful of clutches. You know, maybe about 20 or 30 clutches left to hatch, and then we're done for clubers for the year. Well, that's okay because we're about to put colubrids in hibernation here in just a few more weeks so uh, the cycle is starting over again like it has for the last almost 30 years definitely a very hectic day here at BHB Lori is actually gonna feed the adult colubrids while I'm setting up the geckos because there was a lot more geckos than I thought it's gonna take me a lot longer so Lori has all her food done and she's gonna feed this while I am setting up baby geckos uh, Man, it's a manic day Yeah, 
Next up is where I start really missing Jessica. <laughs> and that's because of course Jessica's on vacation for the rest of this week and I have to start checking to see how many baby geckos have hatched and how many I have to set up. So let's go take a look and see what's going on. Oh yeah, there is a lot of geckos in here. All those need to get set up. Oh, yep, look at these. Oh, there's some really pretty geckos in here. But look, oh my gosh, look at some of these. Ooh, there's gonna be some beautiful geckos. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what that is. Oh, I can't wait to start looking at these guys. So those all have to, oh my gosh, all these have to be set up. Holy moly. Oh, there's another total eclipse right there. Oh my gosh, there are a lot of, more geckos. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh, and more geckos. Holy moly, guys and more geckos have hatched. And more geckos have hatched. And more geckos have hatched. What is going on? I better call Jessica and tell her to get back immediately. That is a lot of geckos that I have to set up today, guys. Holy moly. I was not prepared for that many geckos. There's gotta be 200 geckos here that have hatched. Uh, oh, you gotta do what you gotta do. I cannot wait till Jessica gets back. All right, guys, so I definitely have my work cut out for me. Look at all of these leopard geckos that I have to set up. I mean, that is a lot of geckos. I wanna just kind of real rapid fire show you guys a handful of things before I start setting these up. Take a look at this one right here. Of course, that's a little total eclipse. So again, that's that super snow that kind of has the pied looks in it. Then take a look at this one right here. I'm not even sure what this is. The reduced one right here is just a hypo white and yellow, but look at how colorful that one is. That thing is just absolutely crazy looking. And again, we're popping out so many crazy geckos, I don't even know that I can quantify what some of these morphs are. When Jessica gets back, we'll take a look at these and get a better idea of what actually the breeding was, and then hopefully we can dissect and figure out what that is. But that thing is gorgeous. Look at the color on these bold bells. Oh my gosh, I mean, it's almost like a lavender look. I mean, these things are gonna turn out so good when they get some size on them. And I really like this one right here. This is actually a Mac Tremper Bold. But man, the pattern on that one just was so beautiful. I tell you what, I love the Bold Stripe stuff. That one is just absolutely ridiculous. Then take a look at these two right here. Holy cow. Of course, this is definitely a reduced snow, white and yellow on this side here. This one, I'm not even 100% sure what it is. I mean, it is crazy looking. It kind of looks super snowish, but it's not a super snow. I don't even know what it is. It might be a super snow white and yellow. I'm not 100% sure, but being so patchy like that, that thing is too cool. Take a look at this one here in the middle. I mean, look at the fluorescent color that that one has. Can you imagine how amazing that's gonna look in another you know, three or four months when they start to really develop their colors? I just thought this was a really nice variety. Obviously, you have some snow stuff, you have a normal, you have kind of a really dark, cool pattern snow. And then again, you've got this one over here, which is the Eclipse, which is basically almost patternless looking. So again, man, we are killing it with geckos this year. All right, guys, so that wraps up a crazy day. I don't know if that came off in the vlog as busy of a day as it was, but that was literally 14 hours of insane work. So much going on, but what an amazing day. I just love being around the animals and I try to be as happy as I can because, hey, listen, if you gotta do the work, you might as well be in a good mood. If you're in a bad mood, it only makes to work harder, right? So regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog today. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys mean the world to me. Can you have an amazing day for me, please? Can you also do me a couple of favors and hit that like button? Please get this video up to say four or 5,000 likes. Also, make sure to turn your post notifications on. That way you know when I'm uploading a video, which is every day at nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time every morning. Make sure to be kind to somebody today, and I promise I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow.